Hello, everyone. Welcome into another episode of Capturing the Games, the Game Within the Game podcast featuring me, your host, Desmond Jones. Uh, today, we have the CEO of Athlete Relations. Her name her name is Ali Reddick. Re- Ali, how are you doing today? Good. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you for joining us on this lovely Sunday afternoon. Thank you for taking your time out your busy schedule to talk with us today. No problem. Uh, But can you go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I am from Chicago originally, lived there for almost all of my life, Um, and then started in the sports industry right after college, stayed in Chicago for another year, um, worked at a couple sports agencies, moved out to LA, worked at a marketing agency and a branding agency there, and then shortly after started Athlete Relations, um, and we specialize in lifestyle management for professional athletes, specifically NFL players. Um, and we just kind of manage all aspects of their life from, you know, concierge work and dinner reservations and, you know, kind of surface level things to full scale event planning to engagements and moves if they get traded, um, wedding planning. Um, I mean, you name it, we're very much involved in their entire life. So it's something that, um, you know, looks a little bit different for each player and each family that we get to work with. Um, but, you know, the, the bottom line is just helping them navigate the space outside of, you know, the field that they're playing on. So what, what made you start Athlete Relations? You know, I really just saw like a huge gap in this space. You know, a lot of the guys had marketing managers or publicists, obviously agents, financial advisors, but there was nobody that was really handling the lifestyle piece specifically. So a lot of them were passing it off to those people. Um, And obviously it's just taking away from the job that they should be doing. So using like financial advisor example, I had a player, um, you know, a long time ago uh, before that I was doing athlete relations and he got injured in the preseason and his injury was really bad. His family was not able to travel to be with him. His parents were a little bit older. And instead of like, Hey, I need to find like a nurse or we need to get grocery deliveries or things to help him in that space. He called his financial advisor and asked him and he came and lived with him for three months. And it was the weirdest thing I'd ever heard. And I had realized at that point that like these guys just don't know who to call in certain situations. And again, it can be something as simple as like, Hey, I want to go to dinner and I want to utilize the partnerships that athlete relations has, um, and, you know, get free stuff and get all the cool perks and everything, but also like, who's going to be there when the tough things happen? Because like, that's inevitable, you know, nobody's life is perfect. Um, and when that does happen, who are you going to call? If it's your financial advisor, who's handling your money then if they're moving in with you, when you have an injury, like, Again, that's a very extreme example, but it was that moment when I was like, okay, something's got to change. Like we're going to start here and like use this as a jumping off point. And it kind of just grew from there. And like I said, just like each family looks a little bit different and like what their needs are and God forbid, like not every single one of them like gets injuries or anything like that, of course, but you know, really what they're going through in their career and their personal life and their married kids, et cetera. Like it's just kind of customized to make sure that they're taken care of. So you're basically a fixer then of things. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like a mix of like the fixer, the plug, like I've got all the names. All that, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, it's a lot of moving pieces for sure. Cool. Um, so what made you want to like start down the sports path? Um, I'm from a pretty big sports family. We were just talking about this before he jumped on that um, from gotcha. Chicago. So being a huge Bears fan, Blackhawks fan, Bulls fan, Cubs fan, not the Sox. Um, we, we had a little argument about that before we got on. Um, but honestly, just like growing up in a city that's like so sports heavy and like so reliant on our sports teams for, you know, that community feel like it's hard to not be a sports fan in Chicago. Um, And my family was so involved in different sports realms in the Chicago area. Um, My family like worked with the Blackhawks and did a lot of different stuff with them. So, um, you know, just growing up in that environment and like seeing that like, you know, women could be involved in sports. And obviously it's gotten so much better now in like the sense that like there's more, you know, GMs in baseball, we've got coaches in football, we've got all these different pieces that are, you know, really critical now. Um, But growing up, like, I didn't see that. Like, we didn't have things like that. So we had fans, obviously. And, like, we, you know, watch Blackhawks games and go to Cubs games and go to the Bulls games and, you know, be at Soldier Field in the fall. But it's like you didn't get to see yourself in, you know, the leadership roles and in the coaching roles and in the management roles. And, you know, I think a lot of people just started in that, like, PR space because there's kind of, like, that blend between, like, just a PR agency and actually specifically working with the players But it's really just, you know, seeing now, like how many women are in that space that's like driven me to kind of jump into it. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, if you if you're from Chicago, you know how much we love our sports. So, you know, I got it all decorated in my background. <laughs> Juwan, I know you're not from Chicago, so you may not quite understand, but it's okay. I know you still love sports, but so it's all good. So wait, are you like a diehard Chicago fan? Like, are you one of those fans that's like everything is great in Chicago? Or are you like the realistic fan that says, okay, our teams are not as great as they used to be, but we're on our way up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm definitely realistic. Like, I'm the okay. first one to, like, criticize our teams. But, like, I'll never root for anybody else. Although, I will say, like, football-wise, I probably root for every single team because except the Packers, never. Um, <laughs> because I have clients on all different teams. So, I definitely have to, like, broaden my horizons in that space. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, if any of them are playing the Bears, or obviously I have clients on the Bears, but if any of them are playing the Bears, like, they know, like, let's just avoid this conversation at all costs. Um, but it's definitely like a realistic fandom. Like I've seen the worst of the worst and I was born in the middle of the Bulls era. I lived through the Cubs winning. Like there is so many, you know, joyous moments that I got to be a part of. Um, but a lot of them are just horrible and really difficult. And, you know, I'm the first one to like call people out. So I definitely would say I'm definitely more realistic. So why not the Packers though? I'm just, let's just, well, I know why, but can we, can we talk about it please? I could never I can't it's like our biggest rival and like obviously they've gone farther than us in the playoffs in the last little while and so like I just have a really hard time being okay with that <laughs> it's definitely like half jealousy of like you guys are doing better than us and also just like it's rooted inside of my blood like I can't root for the Packers like it doesn't matter if I have a client that ends up on the Packers I will root for said client and hope that they do well oh, but wow. like it's just gonna be something that like That's I gross. have to like take with a grain of salt and as far as athlete relations has been around we haven't had any Packers clients I'm not actively like jumping into that scene by any means so we'll see how that goes that's the, and that's the way that's the way it should be. So yes. I'm a realist as, as well. I can make at times when my team sucks. You know, I'll be the first one to admit. I'm the first one to throw beneath the bus and the first one to give them praise at the same time. Yep, exactly. <laughs> don't, don't look so stressed. Look, is, is it going to be okay? <laughs> I'm laughing because it's like we're probably those people too that like it's like you know that whole thing that's like I can make fun of your you know like somebody I can make fun of my siblings but you can't or like I can make fun of my parents but you can't like it's the same thing with mm-hmm. my teams like I can sit there and be like we're literally so bad like this is awful our offense is terrible and like somebody else says it and I'm like is yours better do you want to have a conversation like I'm like standing up for them and like but you said it first I'm like it's not the same you can't talk about it <laughs> super fast well, I'm not gonna say nothing then because my team is I'm not gonna what's your this? team I'm a Patriots fan so Oh, oh. No, oh, don't, don't do the oh. Wait, don't do the oh. Don't, <laughs> don't do I... the oh. Mm-mm. Oh, my God. Look, I'm good see, on I, that conversation. I, yeah, see, Ali, we'll have to go through on a, on a week-to-week basis. Yes, I I'll, apologize. I'm so sorry for you. What? Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's rough out here, man. What is that? <laughs> Man, I just, y'all trying to roast my team okay now nah, don't let me get the don't let me get the guns out okay the uh-huh. double doink i will talk about the double doink here in a minute don't i will okay? i will literally end the zoom call <laughs> <laughs> i will sign off gotta go sorry my internet went out <laughs> look that that we, uh, look, i'm gonna bring up the double doink later but i'm gonna just say <laughs> cody parkey that's all i'm saying uh, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about that game. We're gonna follow the season, so everything everything is all good now. We got Justin Fields at the at the end. So. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so for yesterday, Oof. yeah, he what, yeah didn't look good. No, nah, anytime you get hit and you lose your headband and your helmet, that's a bad day. It's a bad day. It's a rough day. Yeah, another day in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, but Ali, what were some of the, the challenging moments when it came to starting up athlete relations? Um, honestly, like it's, I'd say like the top two, like most difficult things, like one, like obviously you can't like cold call NFL players. You can't, like, hey, we're looking for a manager. Like it doesn't work like that. Um, DMs <laughs> don't work. You look like you're trying to like, you know, slide into Shoot their DMs, shot. Yeah. Like, a totally different way. It doesn't work that way. Um, and you know, like, especially like a lot of them, and this is just like, again, why I started athlete relations, like they need to be able to trust their team and trust the people that they're around. And like, they should be skeptical of people that are just reaching out and being like, Hey, I can offer you this. Like, 
I would be like, remit, like they should be skeptical. Like there's no reason that they should just be saying yes to every person that reaches out. So like, you know, me knowing that, like it's, you know, building a client roster and being, you know, very active and trying to like, you know, reach out to people to keep growing at the same time as like, you're trying to grow your partnerships and growing, you know, the, the people that you're working with internally, like it's hard to manage that. You know what I mean? You're trying to grow big enough to like sustain this company and keep growing in that space. But you're also trying to like find the people that really need it. And how do you get a hold of them, whether it's through an agency or the financial advisors or marketing managers or the teams or, you know, it, there's just so many like people that are like already in their ear and you have to prove yourself like, hey, I know what I'm doing. I've done this for almost 10 years now. And here's my client roster. Here's testimonials. Like I've literally gone on a podcast before and had clients come on the podcast with me like through the team, obviously like team podcasts and stuff, but being like, she's my like lifeline, like, and like speaking so highly of us. And it's like, that's the stuff that really helps. So I would say like, first and foremost, like obviously just trying to grow a client base in an environment that is like completely a walled garden. Like you can't get into this space. So it's like, how are you going to? And like I said, luckily I've been in the industry for long enough that like I had enough connections to get started. And like, that's really when I like knew that it was time to do it even though I was younger and I was like, you know what? I don't have as much experience quote unquote as I'd like to have before I started a company, but like I have all the connections right now. And like, I'm no, no, if you guys are familiar with this, but like the sports space is so fluid. Like people change positions and leave and come in and come out. And like, it's so crazy. It's like, if you were to wait, if I would have waited like a year or two, like all my connections could have been gone. And then I'd be like, okay, yeah. now I really don't know where to start. Um, so it was really just a matter of like having that, like jumping off point, like taking that leap of faith and like trusting God and being like, you know what, like he's giving me this opportunity at this point to be like, you can go do this and like, see what happens. So I feel like that was obviously like that trust and like building that trust and building that client roster was like definitely the hardest thing in the beginning. And then second of all, like in honesty, it's like, it's like such a, I don't want to say like cliche, but it's like, it's so talked about now, but it is hard to be a woman in a sports industry. Like I use this example on a podcast I was on last week, but like, I was at a meeting very early on when I started athlete relations and I it was with a team won't say who it was, but I emailed multiple people at this team being like, here's what I do. I'd love to come in and talk to you guys about it. If there is somebody that, you know, that's looking for these kind of services, I'd love to be a reference. So like, I know that you guys would probably want to meet me first, like, and hear what I do and learn who I am as a person. Um, so I'd gone in, one of the people had replied and said that they'd love to meet, have the conversation, see what it's like. And if anything came up, so I'm in the meeting and in an office and somebody had walked in, one of the other people I'd emailed previously that never answered me, walked in and was like, oh, so sorry. I didn't realize you guys were in a meeting. And I said something along the lines of like, oh, no worries. If you want to come in and stay for a minute, I actually emailed you about this and wanted to pitch this to you. So like, why don't you come and have a seat? And his exact response was, well, if I knew you looked like that, I would have responded. Maybe you should have put a picture in your email signature and then I would have responded to you. Like that's frustrating. Like I shouldn't have to show you what I look like for you to answer me about working with like that has nothing to do with it. If I was work, if I was applying to be a model, sure, maybe here's a headshot, but like that has <laughs> nothing to do with the work that I do. Like absolutely nothing. I could have walked in there literally being a man and that would have had an entirely different situation because you're not going to say that to a guy. You like there's no chance that if a guy's sitting there that they're gonna be like, you should have put a headshot in your email, then I would have answered you. you <laughs> Right. All right. What do you mean? Like, that's weird, but it happens. And that was like very early on in starting athlete relations. And the sad thing is I'd been in the industry long enough to be like, that happens, that comment happens or something like that happens enough that it's just like another barrier to get over. It's like, can you just sit down and listen to the thing that I'm talking about? Because it's actually really valuable for your players who at this point, like now that it's years later, on that team, I had worked with multiple people now. So it's like, clearly this is something that they were needing and wanting and missing. And you could have offered them this earlier and they could have been getting help earlier, but you were too misogynistic basically to give them the chance or give me that chance to work with them. And it's like, not only is that frustrating for me because I'm having to go over this extra barrier in order to grow my company, it's frustrating to them because these are players that could have been benefiting this from this for years that have now not had the accessibility to it because of that reason. So now you're not helping the people that you're supposed to be helping. It's your job, right? Like you're supposed to be able to bring them opportunities or network or, you know, connections that this would be a good person to work with. You're not doing that. So really like, there's a lot of layers to like why that's wrong. So dealing with those kind of situations is never going to be easy. And I could give you a hundred more examples of that in the last three and a half years since I started athlete relations. 
But like, that's just like at the end of the day, like if we can move past those situations, like I feel like athlete relations will just take off because you can eliminate all of those extra steps, you know? So I guess with that, I mean, what, what advice would you give like a young woman trying to do something else in the industry, something similar, but like you said, the barriers of men being men, I'm going to just throw us under the bus. I mean, cause that's just kind of how we are, I guess just yeah. the whole Men just gotta, gotta see a face yeah i gotta see a face thing to make it you yeah. know whatever you say mean something but what yeah. would you give like young women or just you know anybody young in the industry like in you know that word of advice you know it's like i i feel really lucky because i was raised by uh my mom worked up until only a couple of years ago and she was in sales so she was in a really you know powerful role for being a woman and really stood up for herself so i grew up watching her and my dad both just like striving and like doing, you know, making huge strides and, and being go-getters. So like, I never had this like vision of like women should kind of take the back seat. Like it was just as much my mom as it was my dad. Um, so I think that, like I said, like I've always been the first one to like stand up for myself, but I will say that there's like some, you know, times that that still like would catch me off guard and be like, did they just, did they just say that? <sighs> like, wait, sorry, what? Like, oh my God. So I would say like, I think that when you're new in the industry, especially as an industry like sports that has this idea of like, you're lucky to be here basically, which like we are, we're lucky to have the jobs that we have and work with the people that we are. But at the end of the day, it's not worth like sacrificing like comments like that or your mental health around it or like leaving there feeling like, oh my God, that was just like gross. Like, I don't like that. And like your job is not dependent on that. Like you don't have to just like take those comments or whatever. Like I remember saying something back and being like, well, that's funny because like my, I said something along the lines of like, my signature doesn't need a headshot for me to prove to you that like the work that I do is really good. So if you want to like take a seat, I'm happy to explain to you what I do. Like you can stand up for yourself without being, you know, like completely over the top and unprofessional, even though their comment was unprofessional. Like you can, mm -hmm. you can come back and say like, no, that's not okay. And you know, they might not listen. Like I never got that guy's business. Like I got it from other ways, but at the end right. of the day, like I still stood up for myself. And I think that it's hard when you're in the industry and you're just starting out to know if you're like allowed to say something um, and allowed to stand up for yourself. And like, you are, you're always allowed to, like, you don't have to take that. And I think again, that there's a way to say it back that it won't hurt your job. It's not going to hurt your position. And if it does, it wasn't the right position for you clearly. So like stand up for yourself in like the most appropriate way possible. And then move forward knowing that you did the right thing, no matter how, what the outcome is. I think that's just good advice for anybody at that point, because, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, sometimes standing up for yourself is can be hard, especially, you know, especially what industry you're in and being in different different spaces. I mean, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so another question I would say that you kind of got into. So like with that situation, you got your business other way. So like, how do you end up choosing your clients in different like how do, what's the avenues that you go down or how do you get in touch with those people? Yeah, I, I'm lucky now. A lot of it is word of mouth. Um, so a lot of the clients that we're getting um, now and that we're kind of obtaining and signing on are through, you know, clients that we either have worked with in the past or are currently working with, um, you know, locker room talk and it is, is a good thing. Sometimes, you know, there's a lot of the guys that'll say something and they're like, God, I just wish I had someone that could help with this. And then, you know, one of our clients will be like, Hey, wait, I know somebody. <laughs> and you're like, great. Right. Sounds good. Text me. So I think that at the end of the day, like you have to have, you know, your work has to speak for itself. Like after mm -hmm. all the years that I've worked with these guys, I mean, some of the guys that I'm working with right now, I've worked with for five, six, seven years. Like they know me, they know my work, they know my heart, they know my family, they know everything about my life. Um, I'm also just like an open book. Like I'm happy to have conversations about like, you know, tough things like, Hey, I don't think that this is you know, something that we feel comfortable handling here, somebody that I think would be better suited, you know? So I think, you know, proving yourself and making sure that you're, you know, one trustworthy and two, that you're not over promising and under delivering, like all the work we do is, you know, really good work. And it's at the end of the day, like solid work that like falls within our wheelhouse. We are staying in our own lane, but we're doing our job really well. Like your work's going to speak for itself. People are going to say something Our, I mean, I'm lucky our guys post on social a lot and like tag us and stuff that we do. And like, we don't require that by any means. Like a lot of times that's just them being like, so thankful for like some of the cool stuff that we get to like hook them up with and stuff. And like, literally they'll have teammates just want to be like, wait, what is this? Who is this? And like, then we can have a phone call off of that. So it's really just like, you know, 
nurturing the relationships and the clients that we have right now and, and letting it grow organically. That's awesome to hear that you're doing this in this industry because it's not too many women that do it. So from now on, I'm going to dub you Boss Moves Alley because that's what you're doing right now. I love it. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Well, we're going to go ahead and trans uh, transition into our rapid fire segment. So we want to try to, you know, get you out here on time. Uh, right. So our, our rapid fire segment is where we play. Um, we call it a game within the game where we just ask little silly questions just to see how things are going, you know, check the temperature and whatnot. But so my question is for you, are, are you ready to play? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So here we go. First question off that is it, um, do you prefer chocolate chip cookies or oatmeal raisin cookies? Oh, chocolate chip, unless it's from Jimmy John's. They have really good oatmeal raisin cookies. Every other time, chocolate chip. Another one for the chocolate chip. <laughs> All right, that's good. All right, so TV shows or movies? Is it like multiple seasons in the TV shows? Because then TV shows. If it's just mm-hmm. one season, you get this like teaser and then you like it ends like with like a cliffhanger and you have to wait like six months or like a year or something for the next one. Like I... I don't like that. I'll forget about it. And then I have to like start over. I don't like that. But if it's like multiple seasons, like Shit's yeah. Creek and like Sons of Anarchy was amazing. Like Friday Night Lights, multiple, like big seat. Yeah, that one for yeah. sure. So what's Love your Friday favorite? Night Lights. Friday Night Lights is your favorite? Is that what you're going Friday on? Night Lights is so good. No, I think my all-time favorite, it's like funny, Shit's Creek, serious, Sons of Anarchy, sports-related Friday Night Lights. Those are my like three categories. And then everything else just like falls to the side. <laughs> Although I'm like very it. into Ted Lasso right now. We just started that this weekend and it's <laughs> awesome. Like I'm very, very into it. Apple's yeah. look, Apple's favorite original series. Yeah. <laughs> Ted I love Lasso. It. I love it. <laughs> um, okay. Uh QB question. Actually, no, I'm gonna t- I'm just gonna ask this one. Um, which Chicago championship meant the most to you? Hmm. I have to say the Cubs. The Blackhawks meant a lot because obviously there was like three and that was huge. Like I said, my family's worked in, with the Blackhawks forever. And so like that like really hit home and I got to like watch it with my family. And that was, you know, really fun to be there for those. Um, the parades were awesome. But I would say the Cubs was like so far coming and like we were all anticipating it. My dad and I have been going to Cubs games since I was a kid and he, I was living in LA at the time and I couldn't get home. I didn't have any vacation days or sick days or anything at that job, which is hundred percent illegal, but it's okay. Um, but we, uh, he was in town for his work and he ended up extending his trip. Cause we were like, Oh my God, they're going to win. And we have to watch this together. So we actually watched them win when we were both in LA and the whole, I mean, you would have thought that we were in Chicago, like the streets where people were packed and like everyone was cheering and we were at this bar together. A bunch of our friends are there. So it was just like such a special night. Like there's a video on my Instagram and he's sob- like, we're sobbing. We're like, well, you know, like sobbing, like you can't <laughs> compare that to anything. Um, and calling my grandpas afterwards and like getting to experience that with them. And, you know, they waited so long for it. Like there's, I mean, that's just such a special thing that like, you know, honestly, like most teams and like fan that like, they don't get to experience anything like that. Like the Cubs were like it, like that was like the bar was set with them. So I, I don't think that you can even like compare the two. I mean, a hundred years is a long time to wait for a title. I mean, yeah. I, I will say that that's yeah. a good wow. Yeah, I was happy for him too. So I mean, I'm me being a Yankee fan. You know, winning is is fine over here. But you know, I don't think I there were happy. many people that were like disappointed. I think they were like, yeah, we just saw happy. history. At the end of the day, like, yeah. that was still really cool. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right, quarterback question. I'm gonna ask the quarterback question since one of them right. used to play for my team. Um, Tom Brady. Yep. Peyton Manning. I'm going to throw another one in there. Jay Cutler. I mean, I feel like the obvious answer is just Tom Brady. Like, he's the goat. You got to pick him. Also, I'm, like, currently a little bit of a Bucks fan because we have a client on the Bucks, and I have a couple friends that work on the team, so, like, I'm happy to root for him. Although it was, like, much harder to root for him when he was in New England. Like, I'm sorry, but, like, that whole situation of just, like, being, like, so good that it was annoying like this isn't even fun to watch anymore like I don't enjoy that I like a like I like a curveball like I like some like fun like whoa like okay we've got this whole new situation in Tampa like I'm very into that so I feel like it's just like the only correct answer although like obviously Jay Cutler being in Chicago at one point like I have like a little like tie to that but like I wouldn't pick him over Tom Brady by any means that's like me giving you like an olive branch (laughs) okay okay so Who's your favorite bear? Uh, of all time. Cool. Mm-hmm. 
Hmm. I mean, it was just so cool. I wish, I wish that I was alive for the Walter Payton era, like the eighties. Like I would, I would have to pick that, but also again, bias. I'm really close with Walter son, Jarrett. Um, I think that that's just like what you grew up like knowing, you know, that's so cool. Um, I loved Jordan Howard in Chicago. I talk about this all the time. One, he's mm-hmm. a client. So like, I think that that's, you know, again, bias, but Chicago did him completely wrong. I hate how I that did. entire thing happened. I agree. I think that not saying that somebody doesn't fit in your offense, that's that good at one point. Like when he was with the bears, he was that good. If that doesn't fit in your offense, like look at our offense now it's horrible like maybe you were wrong maybe you were wrong like we should come back to that and like now I feel bad he's jumped from the Dolphins to the Eagles and the back and forth and it's just like they just I don't like that I don't know if I'll ever get over that that was like my like I'm never cheering for the Bears again and then of course here we are but I think that like I have to just like give that as my like he's my favorite bear of all time. And like, that's probably not true, but like, I'm never going to not root for Jordan. Um, maybe it's going to be Justin Fields. Cause this is like our rebirth. Um, but we still need mm-hmm. an offense to make that happen. And like, here we are. So um, let's just stick with like Walter Payton is the obvious answer. And like, I'm going to throw in a little like Jordan Howard love there too. That's respect. They, the bears did doing wrong. You know, wrong. he did, it did a, Back to back thousand yard seasons, and then next thing you know, he's out the door. Yeah. Well, anyways. those last five seasons, those last five years for Bear, I mean, for the organization for the Bears have not been the greatest, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about your team, but I'm just saying, not the greatest. I again, I'm realistic though, you are correct. Like, it's not a good thing. I think that there's a lot of people that like will make fun of us for it, and like, we absolutely deserve it. Like, like I said earlier, I'm a realistic Bears fan, and yeah. not somebody yep. that's just like, no, 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 we're great, like, we're clearly not. Like yeah. literally look at yesterday. That was like not how that game should have gone at all. But the week before, like looked really good. So like we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. The Trubisky yeah. thing was if that era didn't exist, I think the Bears are in a different situation right now. That's all I'm saying. I think you're right. I um I'm the I'm bad. I like am the like leader of the like I didn't like Mitch Trubisky. I like remember where I was sitting when we drafted him. Like I was like, I, remember, I was with my dad. We were in Arizona for a family thing. And I looked over at him and I'm like, what did they do? What did they just say? He's like, who is that? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And we're like, okay, it's a quarterback. Like, maybe that's good. And then we all like looked and we're like, oh God. Oh. And I think it's just like you have, it's like, this is a terrible example, but it's like, you know, when you're in college and you drink one thing for so long and then you throw it up one too many times and you hate it. Like yeah. the one too many times of puking was the draft. And so afterwards, yeah. I hate this. I hate this. I don't want to see this. I don't want to hear him as a quarterback. And then like every time he would be bad. You were just like, you weren't happy about it, but you were just like, see, you were just like bitter. And like, it was like, it was like the angry, like ex-girlfriend of like, no, I don't like this. Like, good. I'm glad he's doing bad. But then you're like, shit, no, wait, it's still our team. Like, we can't be mad about this. So I would definitely say that like, I just like, I wish him the best. I'm glad he's doing good in Buffalo. Like he doesn't deserve how like we as a whole were like not behind him, but like, it's like, we're happy now. Right. Like, like it's like again, okay, yeah. break up. Like now you're with the person you should be. You're doing great in Buffalo. We have Justin. Like, but like, don't put us in the same club with like drinks together because it's just gonna be like, <sighs> like yesterday. I think I got a, not I, I got a tear, man. That's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot Ooh, of look, <laughs> look, I I have one day, maybe maybe later in the future, I have oh, to man. tell you my draft experience when when they drafted Mitch. But we we'll, like we'll say that like for another time. Story. Like everyone in therapy, <laughs> it is. like so it started it when we drafted Mr. Trubisky. Like I'm talking about your real oh. life, and I'm like, no, we too. Sit down. It's the fact that we traded up, though. All right, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop. All right, um, <laughs> which so I'm gonna I'm gonna rip the bandaid off of oh, this one. So man. which Bears game hurt more, the double oh. doink oh. or Jay Cutler getting hurt? <laughs> No, 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 double doink. Well, one, I was there. I wasn't at the Jay Cutler game. I was at double doink. And I was literally, if these are the uprights, I'm center. I was watching it like this. And then I watched it go like, oh no, oh no. And I remember standing there at one point being like, that didn't, there was, mm -mm." and everyone around was like, oh, it started like weaving. And I was like, oh my God. Like I was like hyperventilating. Like it was like worst case scenario. And then like, I think that you're just like in such shock of like, we were so close. And then it happened like that. And it was just like, again, you're watching it and then you're watching doink, doink, 
and then it's down and you're like, (laughs) 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 like, honestly, sheer like terror went over me. Like it was horrible. And then you, this is the other thing that was bad enough. And then you leave and you go drown your sorrows in a bar. You remember it twice over. And then you wake up in the morning and you watch it on Good Morning America because that's yeah. where he went. And uh, we were all like, yep. oh, we were like, what are you doing? Why are you, oh, God. you just oh, lost God. the game? It was so yeah. bad. It was, that was like, and it was like, and it was part of everyone's like hangover too, because you know, everybody left there was like, we gotta go get shots or beers or something to like help with this and then you wake up in the morning and you feel kind of gross and you're like oh i'm having a hangover and you turn on your tv to like be lazy and sit on the couch and you're like oh okay it's everywhere it's everywhere (laughs) and like you can like sports center fine cspn fine like all the classic like we we know it's going to be on there but you don't think you're going to turn on good morning america and watch an interview on it i'm like how are you how are you talking about this without crying? Surprise He's like, I'm crying. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was the that was the final straw. It, the final straw was already. It was the first joint. Let's we'll start with that. All right, but it's oh, the fact so that he bad. went on. Yeah, it was that. It's, it's just the fact that he went on Good Morning America the day after. Like this wasn't lined up beforehand. People didn't even care about who you were beforehand. All of a sudden, you get a double joint, and the next day. You and you didn't even talk to any, the, the media after the game with you in front of Good Morning America the next day. All right, like I said, I'm gonna stop. But I'm wait, stop. okay, I'm gonna just say this too, okay? If y'all didn't get rid of Robbie Gold, I no stand by that one hundred percent. I have the most bitter feelings about us letting go of Robbie Gold. Every time I see him on another team now, I'm like, remember when we had that? Like, exactly. literally, I am like the salty like. Like, no, 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 we're doing fine. And then I'm like watching him through my hands, like, please come back. Please He's come so back. great. <laughs> He's just so you, great. You're not the only one, trust me. Yes. Yeah. No, it's a hundred percent. Like every time I see it, I say it out loud. And everyone's like, we know we feel the same way. And I'm like, no, but I have to say it. it's like part of my like healing process, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get it. So okay, this another one. Mm-hmm. If you could go if you go pro in any sport, what would it be? Me personally? Yeah. Oh God. I'm you know like the saying of like those that don't do teach <laughs> it's like my joke is like those that can't play manage like my fiance says i can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time it's tragic like i'm oh, like wow it's horrible so like if i could like any of them that would be amazing to be able to do something that's even semi-athletic but like i don't even go on runs like i can't do any of those so like i think it'd be really cool to be in football because i'm also five four on a good day and <laughs> like it, it's hilarious like I am here and like my clients are all like a million feet tall and like you know I think it'd be cool to be like that and like have everyone like know who you are and like whatever I also think that'd be cool to be left alone like if I kind of pity them in a little bit but, like I also don't get struck at all obviously I work in this industry so like I think it'd be really cool to be a football player and I think the football season is easily the best manageable season like baseball all year basketball way too many games <laughs> i mean honestly i would not play hockey if you like I, being on ice all the time <laughs> no thank you i'm happy to watch it so like i would still pick football but like i don't think you guys understand like how far out of reach that is for me as a human being like tennis i mean uh no. golf anything no i hate golf Jeez. I like respect the how a lot of people that can play golf. It's like this little ball and you have to hit it like so far. And it's like, they make it like within like this far of this hole. I'm like, are you kidding? Right. <laughs> In what world does that make sense? And like tennis, female tennis players deserve every piece of credit. Gymnasts, like Simone Biles, queen. Like I was a gymnast growing up. It was tragic. Um, honestly, watching people that can do like any of that stuff, like again, kudos like people that can do anything professionally like people that can go on a run for a workout i'm like oh my god wow can you do you want to be interviewed do you need a manager and they're like this is a workout but like seriously like to imagine like running people over being cleo back can you imagine just being like i can literally run you over like don't mess with me like i'm the opposite like if someone tried to kidnap me that would be no stopping me it's just i i it's it's nice knowing you 
we we oh. we gonna pray for some so athletic abilities for you. That's Thank what we're gonna pray for. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> I would like that. one day, maybe in my next life, or maybe my like child will be like super athletic, and I'll just live vicariously through them. There you go. There, there you go. There we go. There we go. My fiance is incredible. Like literally, does it like picks up a bowling ball and strikes like every single time. I'm like, what well, is not even a sport? Like, why are you? <laughs> Okay, wait, wait, what about like cornhole? throwing thing in their backyard. He's like, it's like bullseye. And I like this, it bounces off the ground. It's like almost about to hit me in the face. I'm like, I don't think I should do this anymore. So cornhole, like you can't do that, like the, the beanbag toss thing? You know what's funny? I will say like same with bowling. Like every now and then I get like lucky and like one will be like perfect. And I'll be like, see? And everyone's like, do it again. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. It's like, I quit That's now. That's I'm ending it. this. Like right. I won. <laughs> None of the above. Okay. Can't right, be mad at that. Right. No, we can't. Honestly. All right. Um, you 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 may refer back to one of the answers that you already said, but I'm gonna ask it anyways. Uh favorite sports moment that you've seen or witnessed? Uh, it's gotta be the Cubs. Okay. It's gotta yeah. be the Cubs. Okay. Um right. it was just so cool. Like it was like you said, it's like history and it's your team, and you're with your family, and it's like something so special. Like, I mean. And it was just like witnessing it on a screen. Like it wasn't there, obviously mm-hmm. that would have been like <laughs> insane. Um, but like to be a part of like a fandom like that, that's like so ingrained in this sport and like this city. And like, I mean, Wrigleyville is unmatched. Like, it's just like, I mean, the whole atmosphere of being in Wrigley in general, like, thank God I was there that day. I heard it was insane, but like being part of that kind of community, like you can't beat that. That's true. That's true. All right. Um, if you get a ch- the chance to take over any organization, who do you choose? Like team, team wise. It could be team wise, organization wise. Like we have people say the NCAA. It could be anything you want. You get the you get the keys. Go do what you want to any organization. I think I could be really good at Roger Goodell's job. Mm. I think I could. I think in general, like I'm really good in like leadership positions obviously I have the job that I have but I think that like the key to being good in those positions is just being like a people person and like it'll never happen I'm not gonna be in this job but like at the end of the day like I think that that would be like you know to be a woman in that position I think that you could like crush it there's so many things that you could do and just own that so like maybe a team would be fine but reaching for the stars here I think that I'd be really good at his job Hey, you never know. It might happen. You might have a right connect. It might just be the perfect path. For you. you never know. You never, you never know. know. That's what I'm saying. I can say I know her. That's what I can say. I I know the. I know the. I know her. Yeah. That. <laughs> All right. So what? I got one more. One more question. Okay. Your favorite pair of shoes. Oh, oh, that's such a fun one. Um. I love my, just like my plain white Nike Air Force. That's so boring. No, actually I had a custom pair of Air Forces made mm. um, before the draft this year. And mm. they're really cool. I love those. Kicks of Chicago made them. Um, awesome guy. He's making, oh, yeah. he made like all of our clients shoes. And he sent me ones as like a thank you, which like I'm never opposed to feeling like part of the squad here. Um <laughs> They're really cool. I get compliments on them all the time. Like literally every time I post a picture wearing them, people are like, where are they from? Where are they from? I'm like, he literally hand painted these. They're so cool. And he did a pair for Paige Demako, CEO of the Draft Network. And it's like the Chicago skyline on them and like the flag, like he kills it. So like, I gotta say those, they're really cool. And like, people love them. Plus they're custom. Like you can't get better than that. Yeah, you have to send us a picture of those because I, I know those. I'm very proud of them. Yeah, I know those are cool. Juwan, you got nothing else? I was going to say right. something about the Bears, but I'm going to leave it be. I'm going to leave it be. Nope. <laughs> good vibes. All right. Yeah. Good vibes. We good. good. Vibes me and her, we good. She she gave me a Tom Brady plug, so we good. We're uh, good. There you we're go. Good. We're good. I told you that was my olive branch. We're better. See? Yeah, we're good. We're good. But Ali, it's been so fun um, to catch you to get you on this podcast. Um, before we let you go, can you tell the audience how they can follow you and keep up with your career going forward? Sure. Um, my social media is just ridiculous. So my last name R E D I G U L O U S. I will not be changing that after I get married. It's too good. 
Um, I am on Instagram and Twitter and then athlete relations is just athlete relations on both. And then our website is just athleterelations.com, Nice and easy. Um, and we post a ton of updates about what the guys are doing and like inside knowledge on like their lives and like some fun stuff that we're getting to work on. So, um, definitely check those out. And, um, we're going to be doing a couple of fun NFL games and sideline stuff this year. Hopefully COVID stays, you know, kind of in check. So we can do oh, those facts. and then obviously like Super Bowls and all those fun stuff. So, um, you know, we always are posting the events that we're at and what we're doing. So definitely follow along on there and um, hopefully we can uh, get some fun stuff in this year, making up for last year. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll be following. We'll, we'll be watching. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But Ali, it was definitely a pleasure to have you on this podcast. For all of our listeners, subscribers, please go ahead and continue to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Um, just capturing the game podcast um, is on Twitter at CTG underscore podcast. On Instagram is capturing underscore the underscore game underscore pod. And just re- uh, another reminder for our audience out there and listeners that Capture the Game is sponsored by uh, Capture Scores Agency, where CEO and founder is Sean Smith Jones. Again, Ali, continue making those moves out there. We see you out here. Go Bears. Go Bears. (laughs) Love it. Thanks, y'all.